What's your advice to someone who took your understand myself test and scored zero on agreeableness, but still recognizes the need to collaborate with many people? And so if you're low in agreeableness, you will have the proclivity to be less empathetic and sensitive to other people than they might like. And you might also be harsh and stubborn and I mean, there's advantages, right? You'll tell the truth more likely because you're not so concerned about upsetting people. You're likely more difficult to stop. Uh, and there's some utility in that once you're set on your pathway. But it's reasonable for you to take a good look at that because it could easily cause you and other people a fair bit of trouble. You know, if you're conscientious, but low in agreeableness, well then, you'll be able to keep and maintain contractual obligations. The sense of duty, which isn't the same as the empathic sense that indicated by agreeableness, the sense of duty will keep you to your word. So if you're high in conscientiousness, well, then you can rely more on contractual obligation. Like what's the deal here? What's my end of the deal? What do I have to do to uphold that? So it has to be more explicit rather than implicit because you're not going to be a good gauge of other people's emotional state. And you also might practice, consciously practice doing things for other people. And you'd have to do that strategically. There is some evidence, and I don't remember where I ran across this, that doing so is a facilitator of mental health. And so you might have to learn to be, act agreeable more explicitly. When you're undertaking something with someone, you may have to learn to ask yourself explicitly what's in it for them, right? Why is this an equitable arrangement? And, and if you're conscientious, that's going to be an easier thing to, to understand. So, well, what can you do about being so low in agreeableness? Well, you can capitalize on your other personality traits. You know, maybe you're high in openness. And so what you can offer to other people is the opportunity to collaborate with you in a creative endeavor. And they might leap at that opportunity. Maybe you're extroverted. Now, extroverted, disagreeable people tend to be narcissistic. So that's, that's a rough one. Um, because if you're extroverted and disagreeable, well, then your narcissism is going to be problematic. And that's especially true if you're low in conscientiousness, because then you won't be able to keep verbal contracts either. So, um, but if you're extroverted, let's say, well, you do have the option of being entertaining and enthusiastic, and that's something you have to offer other people. So you have to look at your entire personality constellation and figure out what you need to rely on to rectify those areas where you're, uh, you know, where you deviate substantially from the norm. You may also need to find someone in your life who is agreeable, assuming they can stand you, um, they might be attracted to you just out of perverseness, but, and, and ask for their opinion because their superior empathic sense, let's say, might lay them open to um, exploitation. That's the downside of high agreeableness, by the way. Uh, but they're going to be much more attuned to the social niceties of a given situation. And so you might need to ally yourself with someone who's clearly more empathic and and you know control your tendency to take advantage of them if you can so um and then the last thing i said well practice you know doing things for other people you might have to do it coldly and calculatingly at least to begin with because you don't have that easy empathic sense but that doesn't mean it has to be false you know it it depends on what it's in service of and if it's in service of rectifying and maintaining your relationships with other people, then that's an admirable goal, even if it's a cold cognitive goal rather than a warm and health, heartfelt goal. And so it's certainly better than the alternative, which is to not do it at all. So, you know, maybe you have to do something altruistic once a week or something like that as part of your attempt to broaden the scope of your personality. You know, and then maybe you could have the advantages of being disagreeable, which means, for example, that you're no pushover and that 
you know, you'll pursue your own agenda that you'll strive to win and, and so forth. You could have the advantages of that and some of the advantages of being someone whose empathy makes them easier to get along with and to collaborate with other people. 